imagination or not, but uh, it seems to me that communion takes is slower, the slower the song is. <laughs> we did communion today in like three minutes. <laughs> Next week, we request Fly the Bumblebee, 30 seconds. <laughs> Our scripture today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, and it follows um, the story that we read last time um, on last Sunday. So, picking up in verse 11 this week, soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nan, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As Jesus approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with compassion for her and said to her, Do not cry. Then he came forward and touched the bier. The dead man sat up and began to speak. You know, the one thing I have not learned besides turning on the the microphone is what's yellow and what's white back on this little scripture here. And so I just keep reading. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you guys don't see that. And the bearer stopped, and Jesus said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. This word about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding region. Last Sunday, we read the account of Jesus curing the slave of a Roman centurion. We read the account of Jesus expressing God's love and care, not just for a slave, but for the slave of an enemy, an occupier, a Roman. Today, we see that same miracle, that same gift of life and love is expressed to the son of an individual who for that time and in that culture was unseen by many. She was a widow. She only had this one son. Her life and the quality of that life was pretty tenuous. Without this son, this woman would have no means of economic support. This woman is bereft of not only her son, but any means to sustain her own life. There were lots of folks during Jesus' time who were ignored, who were not seen because they were either unclean or other, which could also connotate unclean. Today, unfortunately, Our culture continues that trend. We don't see those who are hungry. And if we do see them, we give ourselves the excuse of not helping them because some people cheat the system or some people take advantage. And so that means that all hungry people do that. 
We accept that lie and we drive on. Yesterday, at the Tulsa Pride Parade, this church was blessed with the opportunity to show people that this faith community does indeed see them. And not only sees them, but sees them through God's eyes, eyes of love and care, eyes of support and acceptance and inclusion. And we, as a faith community, reach out our hands and serve those who need, who must be seen for God's kingdom to be complete. When growing up, I remember hearing missionaries tell of the fact that the importance of being missionaries in foreign countries, and this is not to disparage missionaries at all, is that um, they need to go find people who have never heard the Word of God and give them a chance to accept. And we can't, the kingdom of God won't happen until everyone has had that chance to accept. And uh, God loved those missionaries, but I think in many ways they got that backwards. I think God's kingdom won't exist until we, as communities of faith, have a chance to see and reach and accept those communities who have not had a chance to truly experience God's love. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them right here in Tulsa. God's kingdom is a kingdom defined by love. And it is made complete by God's love. And that completion is realized when we truly love all. And that goes not just for this faith community, but all faith communities. And we are definitely striving with all of our might to show God's love. But as, as Mercy so eloquently put it, there are just as many, and sometimes it feels like a whole lot more, faith communities that are doing the exact opposite. And yes, God does love them as well. But as we tell our children many times, yes, I love you, but I don't like your actions. Hatred cannot and must not be part of God's kingdom. And we do that. We exclude hatred by understanding others, by opening our heart and giving of ourself, by being present. It's one thing to sit home and watch the evening news and say, well, that was very nice of those churches to take part in that parade. But it's another thing to actually get out there and sweat, as Mercy so eloquently put, five gallons of water yesterday. <laughs> to show, to represent, to stand up for the God that we know and the God that we want them to know. Because we, it, it really, let's stop using the terms us and them because it really is just us. There is just one body. 
Let's open our eyes and open our hearts to truly understand that. And also start doing the work, the hard work of being present and participating in the care and the love for all God's children. Amen.